Let's look at a couple other examples just to, to show you some more of the power of this. Um, let's say we want to know how does the internal energy, how does that change with respect to volume, right? So as we change the volume of our system, if we keep the temperature constant. So what we're interested then is what's du, dv at constant t. Now there's a useful relationship we can derive here using some of these Maxwell relations that we have already um, derived. So what we're going to start from is uh, the definition of the Helmholtz energy, A equals U minus TS, um, and we want a partial derivative of V with respect to temperature, so let's do that for the whole equation here. Take the partial derivative with respect to V at constant T. All right, so we get dA dV at constant T is equal to du dV at constant T minus, and then we need to use the product rule here. Um, we're going to have T times dS dV at constant T minus S times dT dV at constant T. But because this is at constant temperature, by definition, dT is equal to zero. So this last term goes away. Okay, um, so now we can make some substitutions. So first we can move this over to the left hand side so that du dv is all by itself, du dv at constant t. And we can make some substitutions for dA dv at constant t plus t. Let me just write this out so it's clearer ds dv at constant t. Um, if we go back and look at the Maxwell relations and other relationships here, we can see there's uh, some substitutions we can make. So here we can use a Maxwell relation to say that this is T times dP dT and constant V. All right, so that was Maxwell relation we used in the previous video. And this term here is equal to negative pressure. That also comes from the Helmholtz energy um, analysis that we did before. So now we have how the internal energy changes with respect to volume at constant temperature. We have a relationship here. So if we want to, um, to find, out, find this out, we would need to integrate from V1 to V2, and we would have to integrate this whole expression. And that would let us find the change in internal energy as we, at, at constant temperature as we change the volume. Um, we can double check for an ideal gas. We've asserted multiple times that at a constant temperature the, the internal energy doesn't change. And we can show that with this relationship here. So du dV at constant T is equal to minus pressure plus T times dP dT constant, dP dT constant V. We, um, we did that in the last video. We get nR over V. Um, and so this is equal to minus P plus nRT over V, but because this is the ideal gas law, uh, nRT over V is equal to pressure, and so this does become zero as we'd expect. Um, for real gases, what we would do is we would integrate this equation that I have here, um, and often what we do is we start from a, a known ideal gas value, right? So we get U, um, we want to integrate that at some temperature and volume minus the ideal gas case. So that sort of is a, the beginning point of our integral is that we have V1, or I should not say one, but we call that V ideal, where V ideal is a very large volume such that the ideal gas law is applicable up to some other volume V, uh, call it V prime. And then we integrate this expression, right? That goes into here, right? So we have our, right in the same order, minus P plus T, dP, dT at constant V, dV. Because now this is all pressure, temperature, volume, um, we can find, we can find that derivative, put it into here, integrate it, probably numerically, and get a value, and get a, a value for um, how the internal energy changes with temperature. Uh, change with volume at constant temperature. 
So just another example. Um, there are many other ones we could do. Um, one other one I just want to make sure to mention because it's something we're going to be using quite a bit is one from the Gibbs free energy. Um, so one of the very useful relationships here is that dg dp at constant t is equal to a volume. So if we want to find a change in the Gibbs energy, we can integrate this on the left hand side from pressure 1 to pressure 2 dp and we can use the substitution. So delta G is equal to integral from P1 to P2 of volume dp. And so that's a, a pretty straightforward but very useful relationship that we can use with the Gibbs free energy. And we'll look at some consequences of that in the next video.